purpose of this video is to show you what's in the R file called healthwithpredict.r, uh, which shows you um, how the predict function can be used for um, regressions, for, regression, for linear regressions, for regression trees, and for splines. I'm going to use the iris data set here because it's nice and familiar. You've seen this lots of times now. Um, but what we're going to do is make two subsets. So the first um, 148 rows of iris are the ones, let's assume those are the flowers we already have, and then we'll try to use these models to make predictions um, about the last two rows um, in the iris data set. So you should go through and read these comments. You should take a look, careful look at this file. Um, um, but first we're going to look at linear models. Now one thing to note is that there's more than one way to specify a linear model, more than one way to code it, but not all those possible ways of coding a linear regression will be successful when you try to use the predict function. So suppose you do this, right? LM, and then you refer to the outcome variable as name of the data set dollar sign variable name, and you refer to the predictor variable as name of the data set dollar sign variable name. That runs totally fine, okay? The problem is that when you try to use the predict function to use this model to make predictions, it does not work. The reason it doesn't work is that whatever you have to the right of the tilde, R is going to assume should be the name of the variable in any new data set you give it. So if you're trying to use the predict function to take your model and make predictions for a new data set of values that have appeared, R is going to, if you run this, this line of code that we're talking about, line 22, R is going to look in your new data set for a variable named data set name dollar sign var name one, which certainly won't be there, right? Rather, there should be a variable called var name one. So again, although this line of code is successful for running a regression, if you're hoping to use that regression to make predictions for some new data set, this won't work. Instead, you need to specify the model this way. Name of the variable tilde, name of the outcome variable tilde, name of the predictor variable, comma, data equals name of the data set. Because then, later, when R knows that you have some new data set you're interested in, it's going to look for a variable named var name one, and it'll be successful uh, finding that variable. Okay, so here's an example of writing the code that way for the iris data set. And let's see what happens when we just use the function predict and the input is the, um, the object called output. Okay. Well, remember there are 148 um, flowers in the subset of the data that I'm using to fit my model. So when I just say predict, I get 148 values. Turns out these are the fitted values of my model. So if you use predict and, and, you don't, and, and you don't specify anything else, the predict function for the regression literally gives you back the, um, the fitted values. In fact, if I said output dollar sign fitted values, note that I would get the same ones, right? So this is 5.557, right? This one was 5.557. Um, saying output dollar sign fitted values is identical to saying um, predict parentheses output. Both of those just give you um, if you don't specify anything else in the predict function, those just give you the fitted values. But the predict function is, is useful for other things. So suppose that my goal was to run this model on the first 148 flowers, and then the next two flowers show up, and I'd like to use them to make a prediction about um, petal length. That was our outcome variable. So now I'm going to say predict. First argument is still output. Second argument, new equals, and I give it the data set that corresponds to the values for whom I'm trying to make a prediction. This is important. The argument new has to be equal to a data frame, a data set that has the same columns as the data set you use to fit the model. Okay, so you can't just say new equals and then give it some number. You have to make it equal to a row in a data set where that data set has the same columns as your original data set that you used to run the model. So if I do this, um, predict parentheses output, comma, new equals, and then iris for prediction, again, is the last two rows of my data set. If I do this, now instead of outputting the fitted values, it gives me my predictions for the last two rows in the data set. So that is a helpful thing. How is it doing that? Well, it's taking the variable, uh, the predictor variable values from those last two rows, plugging them into the equation for my model. So it's intercept estimate plus slope estimate times um, whatever the petal width was for those last two flowers, and I get a prediction for mean petal, um, petal length. Okay. But this predict function can do even more than that. It'll also automatically give you um, the confidence interval upper and lower bounds and the prediction interval upper and lower bounds. Um, so that's really nice, right? Um, so if you say predict, parentheses, output, comma, iris for prediction, right? Maybe those are the, the flowers that I'm interested in, the last two, and then interval equals confidence. What it's going to do is give me the upper and lower bounds and the prediction um, of confidence intervals 
um, corresponding to those last two flowers. And they come in a table like this. So the, the, the row numbers respond, uh, refer to the row numbers um, in the new data table I gave it. Those are the 149th, 150th flowers. Fit is the fitted value. These are the same two numbers from up here. So my prediction for the 149th flower is that the um, petal length will be 6.2. And here are the lower and upper bounds. So 6.2 is my best guess at the mean petal length when the petal width is whatever it was for flower 149th. And then I have lower and upper bounds for that interval. Same thing for the 150th. Okay, so those are confidence intervals. But you can also make um, prediction intervals just by saying interval equals prediction instead of interval equals confidence. Okay, so here, same thing. The middles of these prediction intervals are the same, but note that the bounds are much wider. Right, note that the bounds are wider because the prediction intervals are meant to include 95% of the data instead of being 95% confidence intervals for the means. Okay, what else can we say about this? Um, one thing I want to say about this is that if you make a mistake, um, some kind of error, when you're specifying the argument new, instead of giving you an error message, unfortunately what R will do is it'll ignore that second argument and pretend that you just said predict parentheses output. Again, if you make a mistake when specifying new equals, R pretends you didn't put it there at all and gives you predict output. And the, re the way you'll be able to tell is that instead of giving you predictions for your new data set, it's gonna give you predictions for your original data set. Um, and you see, so you, you can do things like check the length of the output from the predict function to see whether it, it generated predictions for the data points that it went into the model or the new data set for which you're trying to generate predictions. The other thing to say here is um, that you could, um, omit the new argument when you're making prediction or confidence bands. So here, the code that we just ran says, first argument, regression output. Second argument, um, name of the data frame for which we'd like to make predictions. Third argument, the fact that I want a prediction interval as opposed to a confidence interval. Um, and that, again, that gave me this directly above. For these two flowers, it gave me predictions. But if my goal is to draw prediction bands onto my plot, then I actually want, um, I want to have the upper and lower bounds of the prediction interval at a whole variety of data points, right? Maybe all the data points that were in the original data set. So I can take out this new argument. You can use the prediction interval argument without specifying a new data set. And then what it does um, is R will generate a table where for every data point, the first column is the fitted value, and then the second column is the lower bound of the interval you asked for, and the third column is the upper bound of the interval you asked for. So if you watch the video about um, uh, the one called logs and bands, where I was showing you how to make, um, how to draw prediction bands onto your plot, I showed you there how to come up with the vector of lower bounds and the vector of upper bounds by explicitly typing in the formulas uh, for the, the intervals. But note that if you use the predict function, hey, the second column from this matrix generated by predict is the vector of lower bounds. The third column generated by this um, predict function, the third column of the matrix generated by the predict function is the upper bound. So if I give a name to this, let me do that. Um, let's see, let's call it predict output. Okay, then I'll talk to the error message in a second, If I the warning message. If I say predict output comma two, there are all my lower bounds. I could say predict out output number th column three, there are all my upper bounds. So that is a much quicker way or a simpler way of getting to the um, vectors of upper and lower bounds that you want to plot if you're trying to plot prediction or confidence bands. Let me note this warning. So it turns out that every time you choose interval equals prediction instead of interval equals confidence, R will generate this warning message. So you, should, you shouldn't worry about it. It just always does that. Um, and what it's telling you is what a prediction interval is. It's saying warning, warning, prediction intervals are for future responses. Right, this is trying to tell you if a new person looks in the room, here's an interval such that there's a 95% chance that their values will be captured. So again, every time you say interval equals prediction, you get this warning. It's not something to be concerned about.